I got a couple of levels and then I was kept on for a year to to do other levels and then I left and uh, in them days, you know, you know, given the still it wasn't as visible for Taldy, but you started to really understand then you know that the trauma of what you went through started to have an effect on you and it affected many people in many different ways and right through till today there's people still affected by it and they probably will to the day they died. The amount of people who were into drugs, alcohol, taking their lives and stuff was, was, was really, really big. So for me, you know, when I left there, you know, I you know, I had a very worth peers and like many of the day your your only immediate concern was getting a, a carried and a swell at the weekend and a Chinese there was no long term vision of a future for the simple reason is he didn't believe there would be one given everything that we actually had went through. So what did you do for a living? What was your first Well, my first job actually was working in my first part time job, if you call it that, was working in a, an ace scheme. They brought in these ace schemes um, for people in, in the areas and what, what it basically was was you went into a scheme uh, for a certain amount of time, probably to get you off the, the dole list or the, the, the waiting list and stuff and that and you, you did your time and then you left. But my first full time job really was stacking toilet rolls down in the the centre down there, um, which is yeah. the, not the county centre, the Westwood Centre yeah. he called it. Um, there way back in I would say the early nineties, stacking toilet rolls and stuff. But you know, that was that was what many people thought, and even I thought in some ways that, that was the potential. The fact I've got a job stacking toilet rolls was better than not having a job. Although I have to say that I did go to college as well. Uh, but is this after La Salle or this is after I finished lower six and went to college and then I basically left college after the first mm-hmm. year of my levels to go out and get employment because we're still living at home at the time. There was five of our kids, there was little money coming into the house and stuff as well. You were so living at Twinbrook? Still at Twinbrook, yeah. And uh, to get and I got a lot of part time jobs as I say, but the first full time job was taking tire roads and stuff like that. So, you know, things then started to change a bit. There, you know, and one of the lessons I learned that when you were planning for a job in Twinbrook that you don't put down Twinbrook, you put down Demurray because there was stigma attached to different estates. And that's the reality even today. Mm-hmm. I mean, regardless, regardless of, of what, you know, you're still... Like you're from the Shankle. Like from the Shankle, you're from Rathco, you're from Twimbrick, you're from Turf. That's the reality, the stigma. No matter what your level of education is, there's still a stigma that, that attached to it uh, for many employers, rather there's legislation in that. So I found that in the end So I eventually moved out to Twimbrick and then mm-hmm. moved to South Belfast and eventually... Was this when you... Did you set it by yourself or did you have your partner? No, I had a, par- I had a partner in and then we eventually moved to um, South Belfast and bought a house uh, in uh, what I would call a leafy suburbia, given what I grew up in. Uh, and uh, got a job in the civil service as well, which was, I think it was probably about two years to get into it, but uh, nevertheless I got in there. And, you know, it was a different world in the sense where, not only the fact that I could start to live, realise some of my dreams, was like to travel, you know, on a stag on the holidays, you know, and I still love travel, travel all the world now, but that was one of my dreams. It was also just important to be able to take a fiver out of your pocket and go, do you know something, I fancy a, a, a takeaway tonight. No. You know, really, really small, trivial things or no. you know, stuff like that which you could never ever thought you could do, just to have cash in the hip. But it did start to get an understanding as well of car policing in those areas are placed differently. Mm-hmm. The police in, in working class areas may be, as I say, Shankill or Falls. Mm-hmm. That's when I started to get a realisation of that as well. But also as well, I think it was fortunate that when I went through college and I went on holiday and I met people who, who came from Belfast and some of those people um, lived in Prosnares and we went to the Prosnares. I remember the first time going to a Prosnares. I was really frightened. But we liked the wee couple there who didn't take, we kept contact for a while, but lost contact with. But it started to open my eyes that, you know, the Protestant working class people weren't all thugs with hurry knuckles or forked tongues or whatever. They had the same material concerns that I would have. And the same aspirations. And the same aspirations, albeit 
at the same time having those aspirations Christ because of the social economic deprivation and because of the areas they came from. So it gave me a lesson that, as you asked the question about Republicans and stuff, it gave me a lesson that we had the same interests but we're, we differ in our religion. You know, because of a war, if I had been born on your side of the war, you know what I mean, I would have a different perspective politically, but on the class basis, I would still have the same material conditions of my upbringing, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I started to understand that. Were well, you a member of the union and the civil service? Was there any struggles during that period? Yes. In the early 90s there? There was. I remember in the early 90s there was, there was attacks um, carried out by both, and threats by both by Republicans and Loyalists uh, on members of ours who worked in dole offices and stuff. And I remember in the early 90s, you know, um, being on uh, the branch committee. In fact, I was vice chair in the early 90s of uh, one stage of branch eight, um, which is the Chase of in the early 90s. And I remember um, early to mid 90s, um, standing on a bench at the front of City Hall with my branch secretary, um, where we were, speeches were being made to other civil servants that, that we need to come out, no matter where it comes from, from Republican threats or loyalist threats, we need to come out against it. And that was one of my first experiences of trade unionism. And it was a powerful experience to know and to see that people there were coming out against attacks no matter if they were called by Republicans or called by loyalists, they were coming in a common bond of unity to stand against them. And that again taught me a lesson and I've learned le many, many, many lessons on from that. But that gave me a very, very important experience. As did one of our experience of a young guy who came from a Protestant area who'd actually called me a racist name on a number of occasions when I was working there. And then it came to um, a struggle against uh, low pay, I remember him standing beside me and basically linking arms with me and then I realised that he did, she just basically looked at me, I realised that our common bond on that basis was of more significance than the fact that I was a different colour and that was another lesson I carried in life that, you know, through the basis of class struggle that people and citizens can break down the barriers of perceptions they have on the other community or another person's sexual orientation or another person's religion or colour or whatever and come together on a basis of unity and that struggle. Although I have to say, you know, the lessons of history and of imperialism and of the state is they've always played the card of divide and rule and at certain times it's more difficult than others but I remember from the early years of trade union activity that you know that was one of the things that came foremost to mind. What was the um, the the first political organisation you joined, and why was it? Why did you decide to join? I remember living up in Leafy Suburbia, in the Four Winds, and you know having a, as I say, a good life, travelling and career and all that stuff. And then Orange Parades were marching through areas, basically where the the the, the, the they weren't welcomed by the overwhelming majority of the residents. It's no armour? This was the lower armour, specifically, specifically. And I remember seeing people I knew, including a, a young man who I knew of his childhood, I knew of the brutality, I knew of the, the hardship of his, of his life, real hardship of his life. And I seen him standing up, putting his arms out wide, basically saying, okay, and then just getting a bat in the cross the head, then being pulled away like a piece of meat, you know. And that one instant brought me back to years and years and years of seeing and witnessing the same type of brutality. And they, even whenever I seen the recent rats now down and the firing of plastic balls and stuff, I could just say to myself, you know, how many people are watching that? and seeing that and thinking of the past and all it takes is a baton or a bullet to go near into someone and so many people will be driven to react again um, that's the reality of it so for me it was a, it was a baton and so I applied 
the joints 